Time now for your best me and 23. It's a series of self-improving this month with more help now to recharge and refuel. Our guest is a physician, an author, and a professional biohacker with tips on how to maximize our energy levels and live healthier. It's all in her new book, The Spark Factor. Please welcome Dr. Molly Malou. Dr. Malou, good to see you. Okay, of course. we have to start with um, biohacking. Sure. Congrats, first of all, on your debut book. Thank you. Um, but biohacking really caught my attention. Yeah. I want to talk about that first. Can you tell us what that is and what the benefits sure. are of biohacking? So biohacking is intentionally manipulating your biology to optimize your health. So I personally monitor with my aura ring and my blood sugar monitor, my glucose, my sleep, my movement, and my stress. And all of these things are drivers of mitochondrial health, which are the batteries of our cells. So we really want to optimize our energy production if we want to live long and healthy lives. But again, remember, women or the original biohackers. So I wrote this book for women because we have to biohack a little differently than men. We have menstrual cycles. We have hormonal changes throughout our lives. We have to biohack our metabolisms, our menstrual cycle, our, our you know, pregnancies, postpartum, and menopause. You just talked about energy. Yeah. When it comes to getting energy, you say you could also fast, and that could possibly help. Whenever I fast, I feel like I'm about to pass out. <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing about fasting. Fasting does what's called flip the metabolic switch. Your, you know, cellular batteries are basically, your cells basically have like hybrid engines. They can run on carbs or fats. But if you don't have good metabolic flexibility, fasting can be really challenging. So I do recommend in my book a whole sequence of learning how to fast by first starting with things like whole foods, cutting out snacking, starting with some ketosis for getting fat adapted. So take it slow. Taking it okay. slowly and literally letting your body adapt over time. But remember, I actually don't recommend fasting for everyone. People who are under significant stress, people who have undiagnosed or untreated thyroid dysfunction, people who are serious athletes, you know, they're already burning a lot of calories. They don't necessarily need to fast because it does a lot of the same things that fasting does. Um, people with eating disorders, it's really not best for, for them. But people who have insulin resistance, people who have prediabetes, diabetes, PCOS, fasting can be a great tool in the toolbox for fixing metabolic dysfunction um, because it does really help improve insulin sensitivity over time. It's also great for women going through perimenopause and menopause to help manage their weight. As, astro as your estrogen levels go down, your insulin sensitivity can change. Um, and I also recommend fasting for people who are sedentary, people who don't move a lot, because it does a lot of the same things that exercise does. Okay. That's good to know. Now, we talk about this a lot, exercise and recovery. What's the best time to exercise? Mm -hmm. Sure. He likes to go right after work. I like to do it a little later in the day. Can you talk about um, the timing of all of that sure. and just the recovery and how important all that is? I mean, personally, I believe the best time to exercise is when you're going to do it and when you'll be consistent. Because one of the biggest challenges is people maintaining consistent routines. So honestly, I just recommend whatever works for my clientele um, because all exercise is better than none. But I also t teach people that exercise intensity is important to balance with your stress levels in your life. So too much high intensity exercise can actually damage mitochondria. So doing like over 150 minutes a week of high intensity exercise like orange theory or berries, not necessarily great for you. But you can do as much moderate intensity exercise as you want because that's, that's really conducive to optimal health. So don't do berries or something like that high intensity every, every day. Yeah, okay. I've had clients who do seven days a week of high intensity exercise and they just break their metabolisms. They have trouble losing weight. And I'm like, well, you're doing too much. But I also recommend that women time their exercise with their cycles and their hormonal changes. So during your follicular phase, you have the most estrogen and you're actually the most insulin sensitive. So you burn carbs really well, which means you can do the higher intensity exercise and hit your personal best. But during your luteal phase, you have more progesterone, less estrogen. So you're going to burn fats more effectively, which is why moderate intensity, intensity exercise is better for you. And you're also just lower energy during that phase anyway. I'll have to put this segment on repeat because I'm <laughs> learning so much. You know, getting so much information. Dr. Malouf, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Got to get in tune with your body. Make sure you pick up a copy of The Spark Factor. It is on shelves Tuesday, wherever books are sold. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.